It's no secret, in Pal World there's one pal that's clearly above the rest, and it's this dude. Just kidding, obviously it's Depresso. I mean, who else would you pick? Just look at him. What an absolute legend. Well, what if you took that legend and attempted to defeat all the main Pal World bosses using just Depressos? That'd be fun, right? 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 Oh, well, welcome to my misery. As long as he headbutts Depresso. No, 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 no! All right, the rules for this were actually pretty simple. I would only catch and use Depressos in both combat and back in the base. Any other pals were completely off limits, and for some reason I decided to do this on a private server that me and my friends had been using, which means the difficulty in the game is cranked even higher than the standard normal mode. But hey, at least it made the content spicy. So let's begin. First things first, and that is creating a character. And since our goal is to attract some sad boys, I think the best way to do that is a nice anime girl. So we rocked one of the presets, changed the hair to bright pink, and got on our way. And since we needed to name our character, I decided what better a name than the franchise that constantly depresses me on a daily basis. Good ol' Halo. Following our character creation, we would wake up from what appears to be a crash on the beach. But I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know if that's what it is, because it's the first time I've ever paid attention to this opening cinematic. But little does poor Halo know that she is in for quite a horrible time. But at least we will have a nice collection of Depressos at the end of the day. Because if we need a group of people to make us some sad emo rap, I think Depresso will be killing it on SoundCloud. I decided since a good amount of Depressos spawn in the starting area at night, choosing that basic starting area probably was the best bet. So day one went pretty uneventful as mostly I just ran around trying to gather materials and start a little base so that I could build some pal spheres so that once it turned nighttime, I could capitalize and attract some of our new friends. During the day though, we did make sure to run around and show some Lamble who the real boss was by punching them directly in the face. And since we had to get going pretty quickly, I just plopped the base down basically right down the hill from the initial spawn, plopped down the old pal box and punched some chickens for good measure. Gotta make sure that we stay in peak form. I mean, we gotta impress the Depressos. We even managed to acquire a free rock mining thing that someone had left behind from a previous base that they abandoned. At this point, I remember that even though we would be tackling this alone, our guild needed a name so that we could impress the other people on the server. And what a better name than BetterHelp, the online therapy service that is all over YouTube ads. So will this kill my chances of getting a BetterHelp ad in the future? Probably, but honestly, who cares? Trust me though, when I say at the end of this challenge, we're all gonna need some therapy. After I started building up my base and named my guild, I actually ran into one of my friends, Sabo, who happened to just be running around the server while I was starting this challenge. He was also sporting a nice default anime girl, though he was rocking blue hair. And I gotta be honest, that's just strictly inferior. After building our essentials like the pickaxe and the axe to, you know, get farming, I realized with night coming up, we needed to get some clothes so that we don't just completely freeze. So we acquired our clothing and our anime baddie was now well equipped to take on the night with her pickaxe in hand, random rags on her body, and some spheres to throw at her new friends. We even managed to craft one of the common shields and a bow before nighttime. Not too shabby. Though thanks to Power World's great server optimization, I actually had great difficulty crafting arrows for that bow as it would just lag every time I tried to click the craft button and nothing would happen. Another great benefit of me deciding to do this on an online private server instead of just doing a solo lobby. Basically, I made a great choice and it didn't just constantly backfire in my face the entire time I was doing this. Well, now that our first night was upon us, it was time to try and find some of the greatest pals in the game. And luckily, we found one right off the rip. A handful of punches for me and Sabo who was still sticking around, and one pal sphere later, and our friend Depresso had joined the squad. Totally on his own accord though, there's no fourth labor around here. This is a friendly game of Power World. I decided as our first Depresso, he should be named me, IRL. The rest of the night went pretty smoothly. We caught three more Depressos, bringing our grand total up to four sad boys, and it felt like maybe progressing this challenge wouldn't be too bad but oh how wrong I was. As the sun rose, we headed back up to the base to make a little progress up there and named our other buddies Espresso, Halo 4, and Halo Infinite and immediately put Halo 4 to work mining some rocks. We continued on building various things and actually progressed our base to level two, which wasn't too shabby. I was only like 40 minutes in. This allowed Halo Infinite to join the other failed Halo game Halo 4 in the base and also get to work. That's probably the last Halo joke for the video, so you can take a sigh of relief if they were getting a little old. Unfortunately, Depressos aren't overly amazing base workers as they can only do about one thing, and that is mine rocks. They absolutely love to mine rocks. Well, I don't know if they love it. I mean, look at their face when they're doing it, but it's all they do. They can also help you craft and can gather items, but really for the most part, all they do is stand around just depressingly hitting the rocks with one hand, but I'll give it to them. The Depresso animations for various tasks are absolutely amazing. It's partly what makes me love them so much. And they just like me, for real. It's probably worth noting here that unlike other pals which have very useful abilities, 
Depresso might have one of the most useless actives in the game. Basically, you hold F to activate the ability, and all he does is drink some energy drinks and increase his movement speed for a little bit of time. But I've actually yet to find a scenario where him increasing his movement speed has any value at all. Also due to the fact that they appear to just be a cute cat that stands on two legs, you can't stick a satchel on him. So throughout the entire game, we would have no mount. Just straight up regular walking and occasionally using a glider. Day 2 was pretty uneventful. We built a really crappy house that I didn't realize you had to put perfectly inside the circle and eventually part of it fell off. And we threw a bed, but I threw the bed outside the circle and had to move it because it didn't actually count. But this did allow us to level up the base to level 3, which means Espresso the Depresso can now join his brothers in some recreational forced mining. We even got a nice little food box, though unlike most bases in Power World where you completely automate the food gathering and growing process, you can't with just Depressos. So we constantly have to go gather food manually and drop it in their box to avoid them starving, on top of having to get wood on our own and our own food so that we don't starve. But don't worry, the Depressos have you covered on rocks. I got rocks for days. I probably have rocks for like 10 playthroughs. We got the base up to level 4, and you know what? It's still going pretty quickly. But here is where we would see our first form of rebellion from the Depressos, as one would get upset and just go to bed in the middle of the workday. Funnily enough though, Depressos, unlike other pals, don't actually have a normal sleep schedule, which to me is just hilarious. It just makes me think of myself with my horrible sleep schedule and I'm up in the middle of the night. That's Depresso. He's up in the middle of the night mining rocks. So despite one of our Depressos trying to hold back the crew, we got the base up to level 5 and 6 before nighttime hit, and then we headed back out into the world of Pal to beat up some more land balls and catch some more Depressos. Night 2 was pretty successful as we captured 4 new Depressos for the squad and we stumbled into some Lift Monk energy, though if I'm being honest these are pretty much useless for our run as you only use them to make it so you can capture pals more efficiently and seeing as we're only capturing Depressos, well I think you get the point. We gave our new Depressos some names with a nice theme of antidepressants, Paxo, Prozac, Luvox, and Selexa were the pills of choice for today, and on we continued. The sun rose upon us on day 3 and we continued on. We actually found some eggs, which are pretty much useless again because I'm not going to use the things that hatch out of them, plus playing on an online server means hatching an egg takes an ungodly amount of time. We leveled the base up to level 6 and built a logging site that the Depressos won't use. I'm just saying, if the Depressos could mine a rock, I think we could teach them to hit a tree with an axe. So Pocket Bear, I'm just saying, if you want to put out an update that allows Depresso to also chop down trees, nobody would stop you. I also decided at this point, kind of during this day, that I was tired of the tutorial in the corner saying that I needed to capture those five Lambles, so I decided I would allow myself to capture these five Lambles, but these would be the only other pals that we would capture throughout the game, and I wouldn't even keep them to make it fair. I literally just threw them on the floor, and someone else on the server could pick them up if they want. When we were jumping out of the water, I also noticed how hilariously Power World shows your clothing being wet. It basically just makes you drip water everywhere and turns the clothing a lighter color. Which don't get me wrong, I'm not the smartest dude in the world, I've never claimed to be, but I don't think that's how wet clothing looks. Must be different in the world of pals. Or maybe the anime baddie has special powers. She does possess the ability to attract sad boys from across the land. During this day, we also got raided by some Taco Tacos, which are these little birds that try and self-destruct. They weren't too much of a threat. With the way our base is structured, I was able to stand at the top of the hill and just shoot a bow at them for a while. And then as they got close, they attempted to self-destruct and really didn't do any damage. We rounded out the day by leveling the base up to level 7, and we headed into night number 3. Here we fought some Melpaka for the first time that were level 9 and showed them who was boss. And I do think it's worth noting that at this point in the game, we were level 8. And at this point, I didn't think it was going to be too grindy. It seemed like this was going to be kind of fun and it wouldn't be too bad. We caught some more Depressos, finally getting the 10 capture bonus. And then we stumbled into a base down the hill that belonged to some of my friends and explored it a little bit noticing how much more effective their base seemed than our Depresso hangout. We even made our way out to the small settlement as the sun was rising, though there really wasn't much to do there. I did try to see if the merchant sold ingot because I was hit with the scary realization that a horrible progression wall was about to come crashing into my life. This is because Depressos can't kindle. And without the ability to kindle, you have no way to run the furnace, as unlike some of the other materials which you can kind of produce yourself, without a pal that can kindle, there's no way to turn your ore into ingot. And seeing as ingot is basically in everything past the early game, the game was about to get a whole lot harder and a whole lot grindier. I actually did do some research at this point, and I found out there is one pal called Bushy, which is this fire samurai type thing that can apparently drop ingot. However, and I didn't learn this until later, but if you look at this location map and you look at this level map, 
you'll kind of see that this isn't going to help us for a long time. There is also a world boss that I found that's a bushy that was roughly level 21. So we could farm him a little bit sooner, but it was still going to be a while. I mean, at this point in the game, we're like level eight or nine. After this rough realization, we traveled back to the base to check on the sad boys and rename some of our new depressos. I guess I lied to you. There's one more Halo joke. We actually named one of the depressos Pablo Schreiber because I thought that would be a good name for one of them as he's the actor for Master Chief in the amazing Halo TV show, if you're not aware. And trust me, it's very amazing. I mean, there is a scene where you get to see the Master Cheeks. I mean, it doesn't get any better. All right, now I promise that's the last Halo joke. If there's any more, you can cancel me. We also got Smiles and Grumpy that were names suggested by Twitch chat, and we rounded out the rest of the depressos with some more antidepressants. Zoloft and Ciprolex to be exact. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Prescription names are all over the place. Also, this made me think, you know how if you live in the US, we always get those weird ads on TV for medicine? We need one for Zoloft that shows a depresso looking all sad. Then they give him some of the Zoloft and he starts walking around with that smile that they get only after finishing a task. From here forward, days and nights just kind of started running together as it became more of an adventure until I had to come back to the base type of thing instead of specifically spending the nights looking for more depresso and the days building up the base. As we continued venturing around, we even found our first dungeon. However, upon going to enter, we noticed that the boss was going to be level 13, which was a little too scary at this time, so we just continued aimlessly wandering around attacking pals that we saw for our little dribbles of experience. We even stumbled into the Black Marketeer who might have the creepiest looking smile I've seen in quite some time. However, seeing as all he does is buy and sell pals, he wasn't going to be much use to us. And being level 40 meant we for sure weren't killing him at this time. From here, we ventured over to the first tower location to grab the fast travel right on the outside and continued up the hill to the syndicate camp where I thought we would have an easy time slaying some plebs and freeing a pal. But one of the dear pals that I cannot pronounce the name of would have other plans for us. Oh, oh no. Oh no. I'm very low on health. Alright, as long as he headbutts Depresso and- No, 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 no! Since this was on hard, it meant not only did we drop our items we were carrying, but we also lost our entire squad of Depressos, which is just merely unacceptable. Luckily, we died pretty close to a fast travel point, so heading back would be pretty easy. We just had to fast travel over. Once venturing back, we would free the spark at being held captive by the Syndicate with the intentions of selling him to the creepy smiley guy, but eventually I just ended up dropping him because I didn't want to go find the guy again. After this, we would continue to venture north a little bit until the ground turned red and we spotted some Caprity, which according to this wiki are a large horned rabbit with a huge berry bush as a tail. Now that's not what I would have described them as, but these Caprity are going to become our arch enemies. So at the time, I saw two measly level 12 Caprity, and I thought this would be no match for me and the Depressos rocking a high level 9 at this time. So I went ahead and engaged them. Oh god, oh god, oh my shields are gone. Alright, come on, Depresso. Oh no, oh no, this is bad. This is bad. Oh no, no! Ah! It turns out that Grass Pals can have a move that binds you, and if you get hit by this, it makes it impossible to dodge further attacks as you can't roll or really move. <laughs> this obviously would be the death of us, but again, at least luckily we weren't too far from a fast travel, so we headed back and picked up the squad, who I can only imagine were worried I would never return to them. Once reunited with my fellow depressed squad mates, we were overwhelmed with a thirst for blood, so we decided to attack one of the Caprides that had killed us at this time and well, our superior skill and intelligence was shown. Actually, this is probably a decent time to say this, but holy moly, the AI in this game for the battling is pretty bad. Don't get me wrong, I love Power World, but the AI is questionable. Continuing on, we found a desolate church, which actually had a fast travel point right on the outside, found some lore along with a chest, and some more lift monk energy that I probably won't ever use, and I'll be honest, I expected a little bit more out of a church POI. As nighttime hit, we stumbled upon another syndicate base, this time full of dudes who would just throw grenades at themselves for some reason. We wiped them all out, freed the Drummond, and even hit level 10. As daytime came up, we ran into a group of Sweepa and Sui, which only being level 5s and the singular level 8, I thought would be no challenge. Though it would end up being an extremely close call, and I would lose all of my Depressos outside of Zoloft during the battle. This fight would require us to return back to base, and being almost 2am in real life at the time, I figured it was a good stopping point for the day. Get some rest, rejuvenate, regain the mental, and head back in. The next day I logged into Power World, ready to continue my journey, and was immediately greeted by a disaster. Since I left all the Depressos out of the base while I was gone, and this was a live server, they had completely run out of food. So not only were they starving, they were also injured and all of them were depressed, which funnily enough was something that I never fixed for the remainder of this challenge, even though I tried. After finally getting enough food scrounged up so they were no longer starving to death, we headed back out into the world to take on our first world boss. 
the level 11 chill it. He was no challenge for me and the depressos though, and we even teabagged him for good measure. Immediately after defeating the chill it, we would venture into another base right next to it from one of my friends on the server, and I'll be honest, he had quite the setup. Continuing down, we stumbled into our mortal enemy, the Capriti again, hanging out in a group of two, though this time with the use of my three shot bow, we were barely able to defeat them probably because one of them glitched out and appeared to just be stuck in the floor. Pocket Pair really clutched up here, I'm not gonna lie. Back up at the base, we finally built the Depressos a hot spring so that they could relax, and the way they lay in the hot tub is hilarious. The, the, what the, the Depressos drowning! <laughs> Dude, when they, when they lay in the hot spring, they lay face down. Sadly though, the hot spring would not quell the thirst for sadness, as they would all remain depressed. Here I determined it was about time to take on the first boss, or at least give it a try. So we traveled on over to Zoe and Grisbolt, and we gave it a shot. And at first I thought it was going pretty well. Though me IRL, our main depresso, who we've been funneling our extra stats and abilities into, would drop extremely low on health at the start of the fight, making us have to use our backup depressos. Which, whew, that's not a good sign. Unfortunately, we would end up dying to the boss, and I'll be honest, it's a little BS that I got hit through the wall with this ability, but we went back and grabbed all our dropped goodies and decided, I don't think we're ready for the boss yet, so let's go on a bit of an adventure, and we stumbled into an abandoned mineshaft. What might be in here, you might think? Maybe some ore, maybe some cool pals, maybe endless treasures? Who knows? I mean, it's an abandoned mineshaft. No, it's just a creepy dude and a bunch of medieval torture devices that I like to not think about what this is implying about the Black Marketeer. Alright, see you later Sir Creepy Smile, hopefully we don't meet again. Once we got back to the base, there would be another raid, this time by the Syndicate Scouting Party. Defeating this raid would actually be a fairly simple task, and after this I would actually hop off again for the night, but this time I was smart enough to put the Depressos in the POW box, so I wouldn't return to an absolute disaster the next day. I came back refreshed and finally ready to beat the final boss. However, it would appear that all of my depressos were still in fact depressed. Well, nothing we can do about that, so I headed out into the world to farm some experience and find all sorts of treasures. Here we found a formidable foe, a level 19 brawn cherry, and at level 12 I decided to take him on, and we would completely dominate this brawn cherry, who would proceed to get absolutely melted by me IRL with his extremely effective fire move that we had found, and we even got over 100 experience for killing him, which felt amazing compared to the normal 10 or so that we were getting. As we adventured on, we would stumble upon the level 31 world boss Univolt, who I knew we could not take on at this point, so we just strategically snuck by escaping into the night, killed some random pals, and hit level 13. Then we powered up me IRL with some more new moves, now rounding out his moveset with the Sand Tornado, Dragon Burst, and the Fire Arrow, making him a fairly effective fighter. We even found a level 4 Rib Bunny, which there's actually nothing notable about me fighting him, I just thought the little Easter Bunny looking pal was kind of cute. We would then stumble into another merchant, and again, I was disappointed by the lack of ingot. I was just praying at this point that I would find someone that would sell me ingot because I wanted to progress at a rate faster than I was going, but unfortunately my hopes would be continuously dashed. We would then go on to find our second dungeon, and this time I felt like we could go for it since we were at a bit higher level. We ventured through the dungeon, getting lost as you do in Power World, eventually fighting the boss room where we would fight a level 11 Tain Z and his friends. Tansy, similar to our arch enemy the Caperty, also sports that same grass snare move. And well, is this the boss room? Oh shit, it is. It's boss in time. Oh god, this is problematic. We just gotta keep, we gotta focus on just oh, oh shit, yeah, that's gonna hit me. Oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? Oh no, no! This time the venture back to our body was not as easy. We had to run around the entire island with no clothes or anything. I was pretty worried my depressos would be gone for good since I died inside of a dungeon, but Pocket Pair was actually pretty smart here, and they made it so your death box and pals would just drop outside where the entrance of the dungeon was. With the dungeon now closed though, we ventured on in a different direction, but at this point in the game, the lack of a mount had become extremely brutal. If you saw any of my stream, we were just walking. We were walking for days. We headed to the bottom left of the map, which is where we could find some of those pals to hopefully farm some ingot, because at this point when I was playing, I did not know the level of this area, but it didn't really matter because I didn't actually have heat resistant clothing at the time, so I just had to turn around to avoid burning to death. We ran into another Caperty and we absolutely crapped on it just for good measure. And then we found another one of those NPC camps, but it was guarded by level 20 NPCs, so we yeeted on out of there and tried to stay safe. We would then stumble into another one of the Easter Bunny Pals from earlier, but this time it was actually level 14. Oh god, why are these f***ing me up so hard? Holy, these are gonna kill me! Kill him, Depresso, hurry! Depresso, hurry! 
I'm getting fucked up over here. No, this Rabuni is mad, dude. Get it. Get away from me. Get away from me. Oh. Oh, no. We are so... Oh, my armor's damaged. Great. Oh, no. I'm gonna die. I have to juke it. No! Oh! I'm gonna have to walk back here for like 20 minutes, brother. The bunny was a little bit too much for us to take on, and I would actually die and let me IRL die during the fight. On the way back to our body, we would find two mammoths fighting, which was actually kind of cool, as I didn't realize that could even happen. I don't know if it's a fight to the death, or if they're play fighting like a dog would in real life, but we wouldn't find out because I got a little bored watching the fight, so we actually don't know if they stopped or if one of them ended up victorious. If it's worth anything, chat voted the one on the left was the one that was going to win. Upon getting back to our body, there was a group of aggressive Taco Tacos right on top of it. They were very angry that I would even dare invade their space and tried to self-destruct on me when I was trying to pick up my loot. But luckily, I hit the slide tech and yeeted out of there with my glider. As we arrived back at the base, there was a Depresso floating in midair for some reason. You gotta love Power World sometime. I would even go on to build a second and hot spring hoping it would help with the depresso depression spoiler it didn't and i built a furnace that i couldn't use but it at least allowed me to upgrade the base to level 8 which is basically the soft cap for us right now because without any ingot you can't build the required items to level up the base any further we built some cold resistant and heat resistant clothing so that we wouldn't run into any issues and we headed on back out as we were traveling around i thought i would try and glide over this body of water but i'm dumb and i ran out of stamina falling into the water this is not good I'll try and figure it out. And honestly, this really worried me as I thought my items were going to be stuck in the water, but Pocket Pair was nice and they thought ahead again, and it actually teleported my items and pals to the shore so that I could safely get them back. We would go on and kill Chillit again for good measure, just so they know who's boss. Following this again, we strolled through my friend Zinc's base and was hit with a wave of jealousy that his base was actually functional, and on the other side, we would find a Caprity stuck in a tree, which honestly, good. I hope they all get stuck. I like when the pals are just stuck in trees. 10 out of 10. Good, good work. But in remembrance of our beef, I decided to have me IRL just burn it a lot. As we got back to the Marsh Island, we stumbled into some syndicate NPCs fighting with the Mamoreths, which for some reason there was two of. So I sent me IRL into the fight to try and just kill some of the syndicate for experience. However, he managed to piss off the Mamoreth and got completely one shot. So we just noped on out of there and had to send me IRL back to the old pal box to come back to life. At this point, I figured it was time to take on the boss again and managed to hit level 14 right before going in. It's funny because on one hand, these bosses are actually pretty cool mechanically, especially compared to just fighting pals out in the real world. But with playing this on a private server and the lack of optimization that these servers have, it makes these boss fights sort of a pain to play as you can't properly dodge moves that are coming and sometimes really weird things happen. We would start fighting the boss again and luckily for us, the AI is, you know, really dumb in this game and he would just get stuck on a pillar and we were able to just sit there and absolutely just melt their health down for a while with abilities and arrows until eventually it kind of got unstuck. Then it would go on and get stuck on a different pillar and we were able to put in some more damage. At this point, we had him under like one fourth health and I could taste victory, even if me IRL and Grumpy were both dead at this point. Hey, you can let me know if it's good. Oh no, me IRL died, dude. We're down to the backups. We're down to the backup depressos. It's all downhill from here. None of them are as good as, as the number one. Alright, alright, I think we're doing it. No, no, oh! Oh yeah, ice attack. Well, that's clutch right there. Oh yeah, baby! Boston didn't stand a fucking chance. We had finally beaten the first boss in the game, and it only took us like eight plus hours. And I think that's where this adventure will end for now. By my calculations, and by that I mean I'm just completely guessing, we are probably looking at many, 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 many hours of mindlessly killing pals just to level up enough to take on the next boss. Something me and the Depressos are very willing to do if it's something that people would enjoy. So let me know if you enjoyed this video, this kind of storytelling style of video, because obviously this is a huge departure from what I usually make. But for now, Halo the Anime Baddie and the Depresso Army will be taking a rest. I just want to give a huge shout out to the patrons. Like I said, I know this isn't normally the type of video I make, so I appreciate you if you clicked on it and you watched it. I've just been really enjoying Power World and I thought I'd try this style of video. It's something that I've enjoyed on YouTube. So obviously with this being a new style of content, just give me any feedback you have in the comments below and thanks for watching.